I mean, according to the New York Times, the coronavirus pandemic has changed the way we consume the Internet. A uh, Times analysis shows Americans are using the Internet more to connect and entertain themselves. However, the way we go online and the sites and the apps that we use are changing. And this very moment. Well, Nathaniel Popper co-wrote that article. He's a finance and technology reporter for The New York Times, and he joins me now. So, Nathaniel, it's really fascinating here. What did your findings really reveal about how people are consuming the Internet? Are they still on their phones? That's a, that's a great question, and that's one of the things that's been changing. I mean, our, our whole lives have been changing. But I think one of the biggest shifts that's going on right now is that we are moving our lives online. Um, and because we we can't be out in the real world, and, um, and and one of the things that's happening as we move home, as you say, is that uh, we're remembering our computers. We're remembering that staring down at this little screen is perhaps uh, not not that pleasant. And so you see uh, Netflix, YouTube, Facebook. People are going in droves, but they're not going to the apps that they were going to just a few months ago and that the whole tech industry was really focused on a few months ago. Everybody was talking about the shift to mobile. Now we're at home and uh, we're using all of these services on our computers. So what are the apps that people are downloading increasingly during this pandemic? Obviously, the, the biggest shift that's happening is that we are working from home. We're going to school from home. And so uh, the, the, the app that everybody's talking about these days is Zoom. And indeed, it has just exploded, the, the, um, the usage of it. But you're also seeing um, you know, Microsoft Teams, which people are using, Google Classrooms. Um, and uh, it, it's clear that uh, it, it's clear that what people want to do is connect, not, not through text, they wanna connect through video, they wanna be able to see each other uh, because that's really what social distancing is making possible. It's making it impossible to see each other in person. So we're turning to Zoom, we're turning to house party um, to, to get together with our family, to play games. Um, you know, it's a, it's a whole bunch of apps that really were kind of struggling along before this and have now become the way that we're living our lives. Mm. And I got to tell you, I've, I've done that with my family. We, we played Taboo via Zoom at one point, and it was a great way to sort of connect. Um, and it was <laughs> a lot of fun. I, it was really a lot of fun. You know, it was also, I found fascinating in your reporting. You show that local news is up, people going to local news sites. When you look at partisan outlets like Breitbart and Daily Caller, they're not seeing that same bump. Why do you think that is? Yeah, I mean, this is another one of these areas where the trends that were defining um, online life before the coronavirus, um, you know, the, the shift to partisan news sites was, has been so important over the last few years, just like the shift to mobile that we were talking about earlier. Now, you know, in this time of coronavirus, people don't seem to want opinions. They want to know what, you know, how many people are in my local hospital, uh, how many people have died from this? Which business, which local businesses are shut down? And so, local newspapers, which have really been struggling, you know, over the last few decades, have just seen their traffic mm -hmm. take yeah. off. There's nothing like news. I mean, that that is the one category that we are spending most of our time. But we're spending it differently again than we were. We're not we're not interested in the opinions. We want the facts. So based on this data, what do you think the trends are that could last well beyond the pandemic? Are there areas of the Internet that you think will be forever changed about how we consume it? I think that there are areas that will be changed. I mean, look, we're all having um, we're all getting to experience distance learning, you know, MOOCs and, and kids going to school uh, through Google Classroom. We're obviously all getting to work from home in a way that we didn't get to um, before. And I think some of, in some ways, we're, we're realizing how inferior that is. We're probably, uh, as soon as this is over, we're going to want to get back in the classroom. We're going to want to get back and see our colleagues in the offices. We're realizing that this isn't a great substitute in some ways. But I think in other ways, we're going to realize the ways that, you know, a Zoom meeting uh, early in the morning maybe is better than everybody, uh, you know, uh, gritting their teeth through traffic and getting to the office early. Mm -hmm. You know, you can certainly imagine that there's going to be more of all of this moving forward. 
Um, but obviously, I think there's there's an element of this which is reminding us of <laughs> how much we like seeing each other, how much we like being around each other, and yeah. how much we like playing taboo in, in a room with each other rather than just <laughs> kind of box of each other's you know faces. You're absolutely right. I, I do miss that human connection. But I got to tell you, Nathaniel, I'm coming to you streaming, wearing a business suit with sweatpants and cashmere slippers underneath. I'm quite enjoying that aspect of this job at this moment. I want to thank you too. very much. Yeah, it's all about the head up uh -huh. for these few weeks, at least.